Trey Burton was awesome filling in for Zach Ertz yesterday. A pair of touchdowns. If Ertz doesn't play next week and there's no Carson Wentz, could Trey Burton stay on that flex radar or a tight end one radar? Yeah, I think I have to like stair step this there. So if let's just assume that everything else with the Eagles offense was the same, then Trey Burton, I believe, and we've talked about it on Fantasy Football Now a bunch of Sheffield. Yeah, he kind of fills in for Zach Ertz. He's kind of that, um, you know, that tight end that has the ability to win one-on-one -on -one matchups. I think the concern I have now is what the changes will be with this Philadelphia Eagles offense. They're going from, you know, an MVP candidate at the quarterback position, probably, you know, maybe MVP favorite, to, you know, a guy that I don't think his skill set is really set up to play really well, doing the same things that Philadelphia has been doing. So. I just think this entire Eagles offense is going to take a step back. D.D. Westbrook's been pretty good for the Jaguars since being activated off short-term IR. Another game with at least five catches and a great touchdown celebration after his first NFL well, score. Here's the thing. I, I don't know if there's enough volume of work, and I don't know if Blake Bortles is going to continue to play as well as he played against the Seahawks, even though he is playing with his most confidence. I, I think, look, flex consideration on D.D. Westbrook because of the target share, and then let's face it, matchups with – Houston, San Francisco, and then Tennessee. Yeah, I think at that point, you at least have a decision to make on Westbrook, and he's worth rostering. Jacksonville could be scared, staring down 12 wins this season. That's crazy. Hey, anyway. kid, kid, what's going on there? Good job there. I, I heard you mention Westbrook. Finally, someone on this show is talking Westbrook. Uh, really mature of you, although this, <laughs> this, what is this? This mess over here with the cups and the Christmas tree. This isn't the Beta House, kid. It's decorative. All right, uh, since you talked about Westbrook, how about you talk about LeBron next, huh? Hmm? Hmm? Le well, can I give you Eric Ebron at least? Yeah, LeBron. Okay, do it, kid. Eric Ebron it is. Eric Ebron, the Lions <laughs> tight end, a favorite of this show to make bad LeBron puns, and he had 10 catches on Sunday. Did fumble the football. Uh, an athletic guy, Tim, and it feels like we've been waiting for him to break out for like four years now. Was Sunday a sign of things to come? I think in a, in a way, you know, since, um, you know, there – Basically, the second half of the season is going to be much better for Eric Ebron than the first half of the season. And I think that um, if you look at a matchup against Chicago, who's, you know, that's been a team that's been good against the tight end, maybe isn't great. And Cincinnati and Green Bay to finish the season. I think Eric Ebron, especially as we've kind of been navigating these tight ends between you know, guys like, you know, Tyler Croft and Jack Doyle and, and Charles Clay. Yeah, I think Eric Ebron certainly could end up being a guy that's a good play. He's like a lot of other tight ends other than like a core five. He's a tight end, too, who comes with a lot of risk and yep. some potential upside. That's just the nature of that position.